Why, hello there. Our problem is motorcycle cruise control. Uh, I'm Nathaniel Morrison along with Grant Mills and Chad Young. Our problem definition comes from current uh, motorcycle cruise controls. They're known as throttle locks, which is really just a, a bar that moves over the throttle to hold it in place. And it doesn't account for any disturbances, and it also doesn't account for any sort of resistance to the motion of the m m motorcycle. Uh, so in our model, it should adjust the throttle according to the conditions of the roadway and of the rider. Uh, so this is just showing uh, on a throttle locked motorcycle the man driving has a uh, just has his hand all the way down on the throttle and as he goes up the hill you can see the speed decreasing even though his, his hand is in the same position so our controller will uh, change the throttle according to the conditions of the roadway like a hill so that you stay at a consistent speed while driving your motorcycle. Uh, so for our system, as I mentioned previously, it'll be able to account for hills or headwinds uh, using a integrator controller. Our model for our system, uh, the plant, is a first order model to so just using the mass of the rider and a drag coefficient. This has inside the drag coefficient is the air resistance and the rolling resistance. Um, and then moving on, this is how we figured out our drag coefficient. Uh, it's, it's just model, it's a model of uh, force against the rider with speed. And we estimated that around a rider regularly travels 40 kilometers an hour, uh, which is like a street speed. And so we just linearized it at 40 kilometers an hour to provide the coefficient. Uh, so analyzing our system with a step response, you can see that um, there's zero overshoot with a rise time of 30 seconds. Uh, rise time of 30 seconds is important because if the rider, if the rise time were to be much shorter, it would cause a lot of strain on the rider and on the bike itself. Um, zero percent overshoot is is an excellent characteristic because uh, when you're riding on the road, you don't want your motorcycle to be uh, at a different speed than it actually is on the dial. Yeah, the system is also inherently BI BO stable because it's a first order system, so you'll never have to worry about it becoming unstable. For designing the controller for our system, we set two goals. We chose a settling time of 60 seconds to be easy on the engine and battery of smaller motorcycles and to reduce rider strain. And we also set a final value of 11.11 meters per second, which is approximately 40 kilometers per hour. We chose this speed because of the previous discussed linearization of the rolling resistance and wind drag. Below you can see a diagram of our system, including uh, the controller and the disturbance input from a hill. Using our aforementioned goals, our team used the equations we learned throughout the course to generate values for our KI and KP in order to implement a PI controller. As can be seen on this slide, our system is able to respond to the step disturbance of a hill, which is generated at 100 seconds, and it recovers nicely. As can be seen in our root locus plot, the closed loop system is BIBO stable for all gains. The poles are located in the left half plane as well as the zero. By inspecting the system response graph to the input desired velocity and the disturbance, the performance metrics of the system can be found. For the initial input to the system, which was just the desired velocity, the settling time is 51 and a half seconds. This time is within our settling time goal of 60 seconds. The max velocity that the motorcycle system reaches in getting to its final value is 11.21 meters per second. This represents an overshoot of 0.89%. Before this disturbance is introduced, the system achieves its steady state value 
of 11.11 meters per second or 40 kilometers per hour. This satisfies our final value requirement. The disturbance in this system was introduced at 100 seconds in the previous graph. The settling time required for the system to return to its final value was 54 seconds. This had almost no overshoot and eventually the system made it back to its final value of 11.11 meters per second. This satisfies our final value requirement. Both of our criteria are met, and the low overshoot and slow settling time indicate that the system is efficient. For a motorcycle system such as this, efficiency is valued. As we saw in the previous slide, both of our system performance goals are met. The settling time in both cases was less than 60 seconds, and the final value, both with and without a disturbance, was 11.11 meters per second, or 40 kilometers per hour. This success can be attributed to three things. First, the first order system was familiar. We were able to apply lessons we learned in feedback to this new system. Secondly, the controller calculations we performed in section 2.4 to find the K sub i and the K sub p values ensure that the system response would be accurate. Finally, the drag approximation with wind and rolling resistance accurately represented the real world system. It is also important to evaluate the robustness of our controller. Using tools like a Bode plot and a Nyquist diagram, the stability of the system can be predicted. Using the Bode plot, it was found that there is neither a phase nor a gain margin. This is because the magnitude never crosses zero decibels and the phase never reaches negative 180 degrees. This is actually great because it means that there is no time delay that will cause the system to go unstable and there are no K values that will cause the system to go unstable. For these reasons, the controller and system are very robust. This is the Nyquist diagram and the open loop transfer function for our system. It is important to know if there are any unstable open loop poles in the controller system. Factoring the denominator reveals that both zeros are in the open left hand plane, which indicates stability. In other words, P is equal to zero. From the Nyquist diagram, you can see that there are no encirclements of negative 1 plus 0j, or in other words, n is equal to 0. Since p and n are both equal to 0, z is equal to 0, and the system is stable. Our objective in this project was to create a controller that can efficiently and accurately control the speed of a motorcycle. We approximated the real-world system, we used desired response goals to calculate controller values, for our proportional integral controller. We used a unity gain feedback loop and we ended up with a stable, efficient system that can accurately modulate the speed of a motorcycle.